Peace be to you. This is Omar Abdul Malik, physician assisted health educator and marathoner, among other things. <laughs> so, um, I'm here doing my long run. This is like a three, a three and a half hour run I'm doing. I usually do this about maybe six to eight weeks before a marathon just to get my body prepared my body and my mind and spirit prepared for covering that kind of distance and moving that uh, moving that long uh, so I got the uh, rock and roll marathon here in Washington DC March 9th God will inshallah so <laughs> my goal is to if I can't get a 259 at least qualify for Boston so my age group 50 and 54 has got to uh, we got to run a three three hour 24 minute marathon and that's not easy to do <laughs> on uh, aging knees and and time constraints of, uh, of family life and professional life so that actually sedgeways but they, they have to have a uh, there has to be some type of, of cutoff because and in the Boston Marathon, you know, there's, there's, they got to, uh, they got to get security, especially after the Boston bombing. But you got to have streets, um, streets and avenues and things uh, blocked so the marathoners can make their way through the city. So running and planning a marathon is not easy. Uh, but you got to have some type of... Um, quantitative weeding process and that segues to my topic which is why is it so hard to get into physician assistant school nowadays and for those of you all that have been following me and following other people like Adana the PA and, and uh, you know others that are really active on, on Instagram and um, things like that social media you know that the PA profession started about 50 years ago, so um, 1967, if that date is correct, by Dr. Eugene Stead at Duke University. And it was started really for um, guys coming out of the military who had um, who were medical corpsmen. Um, or corpsmen, I think the term is. You know, back then, you didn't need a college degree. You didn't need direct patient contact hours. You didn't need to have shadowed anybody. Being a corpsman was good enough. And not that that is necessarily a substandard um, ideal. You know, if, if you fought in the war, if you're a veteran and you've seen what they call action, um, you'll know what I'm talking about. I, I, I haven't. I'm not a veteran. But, um, you know, those guys... Those guys were really uh, pioneers um, in their profession. But then, slowly what happened, you know, the PA field started getting more popular. So then you had to have different standards. I won't say necessarily higher, but different. It became an associate's degree, other than just a certificate program. Then after, when I got into PA school, which is uh, 1997, that was about, uh, well, 22 years ago now. Um, there were a lot of associates programs still around. There were some certificate programs around. Um, it was a bachelor's program at the Howard University. But um, there was talk of making the uh, PA programs obligatory graduate degrees. And, you know, with the uh, NCCPA, it's the National Commission, on the uh, certification of PAs and and uh, uh, the um, American Academy of Physician Assistants, yeah, there was a lot of back and forth of like, should we make this the new standard? Is it going to leave people out who would otherwise be good PAs? A lot of um, debate about that. So now, in this day and age, <laughs> the standard is to have a master's degree. Um, all of the programs have got to be master's degrees. There might be one or two bachelor's degrees left, but they have got, they have 
bridge programs with the master degree programs. Even though that's the case, it's still very difficult to get into PA school. Now I have people who write to me and say, yeah, I have a 3.5 GPA and you know, I got like that 350 on the GREs and I got 2,000 hours of direct patient contact hours as a certified nursing assistant. I did a bachelor's degree in biology and I still didn't get in. I got, I applied to 10 schools and I didn't get into PA school. It's like, really? My God, that's, that's really, um, that's something. I mean, I, I didn't, I, you know, I try to follow the trends in it, but it's, um, I didn't um, fully, fully realize just how competitive it had become. Even though I sat on the admissions committee of a couple of schools years ago, and I saw students, potential students with very high GPAs, um, and, and it had done, you know, were very accomplished before even applying to, to PA school. Yeah, I, I saw it as a harbinger of things to come, but I, I didn't know it got into the point where it is now. There's different reasons why people don't get in to PA school. They may blow it at the interview. There's a guy, Dave DeBow, the PA coach, um, and Andrew Rodican, I think his name is, uh, wrote a book, How to Get into PA School. Yeah, you gotta ace the interview. Um, but even then, you know, it's no guarantee that you'll, you'll get in. Yeah, U.S. News and World Report just named physician assistant as the number one profession in America. That's, that's pretty uh, awesome. And the, the job growth is unprecedented when compared with any other profession. It's just going to go up. I mean, and the, the salaries have gone up. My first job, I got $56,000. Man, I, was, I thought that was big money. It was, it was okay for 2001. But, but now, man, a PA would laugh at that. You know, coming out. I mean, new grads can expect to make at least 100. So people, the word is getting out. You know, by social and printed media, people are learning more about this profession. So what that does is that deepens the pool of applicants. So you have to have a bit of humility when applying. When you, when you apply, um, understand that there may be as many as, let's say, 5,000 other applicants who are just as qualified, you know, quantitatively speaking, with their GPAs, GREs, and direct patient contact hours. They're just as qualified as you to get in. And they got to, you know, the admissions committees have got to choose, you know, who they're going to, um, who they're going to pick. And again, having sat on admissions committees, it's not easy. It's very, very difficult. Man. You know, I mean, I've, I've turned, there's students who I have not given my, who I've not given uh, recommendations. But, you know, it was, it was maybe something, maybe their command of English wasn't what I thought it needed to be. Maybe there was a presentation, a way of the, the way in which they presented my, themselves. I didn't think they'd be good candidates. But it, it's, there's, there's nuances. <laughs> but it's, uh, it's difficult. It's, you know, and that's just with the, with the deeper pool of applicants. It's the same with, uh, with marathon running. <laughs> yeah, you know, there was a time I actually was, was trying to um, see if I could qualify for the Olympic marathon trials many 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 years ago um, and you could run a 220 minute marathon and be like wow you're that's really fast now man that'll get you like <laughs> that'll get you you know a hundredth place in a marathon you got Kenyan some Kenyan guy ran a two a 201 40 marathon or something like that it was it was 201 something um, you know, there's plenty of people that are running sub, sub uh, 205 marathons now. Yeah, at, at the big marathons, Berlin and Boston, places like that. But, uh, you know, it, there's just a deeper pool of applicants. The, the money's gotten more. <laughs> but that's, that's usually the determining factor. 
of how hard it is to get into uh, something. But I hope you guys, I hope you guys found this valuable. <laughs> I'm trying not to slip here. We got ice and snow all over the place. But I wish you guys the best of success in your positive endeavors. Please check out um, my channel. You can reach me on on uh, Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter, and uh, Facebook. Uh, take care. Peace.